Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and it is officially Ryzen season or at least Ryzen leak season. It's usually the first half of the year that we start to see sort of leaks trickling out of new benchmarks and new opinions and new thoughts on the upcoming Ryzen release and we've seen this for a couple years in a row now and now that we're on to the third generation of Ryzen chips, this time featuring the Zen 2 architecture, you can expect to start seeing more and more leaks as we get closer to the launch date for these Zen 2 chips, which right now looks like uh, June of 2019, maybe that target time. Now, the latest benchmark is posted on the user benchmark uh, database, but it was first noticed by uh, Apasac. Apasac? Apasac? I, I, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but apparently the guy is from Bangkok, Thailand, and he was, at least seems to be the first to have noticed this particular engineering sample of a Ryzen 3000 series chip. And what's interesting about this, and we'll head over to the actual uh, listing for this chip in the database, is that it is a 12 core 24 thread part. And that's really, really exciting. It would be really great to see some of these higher core count and higher thread count chips making their way to the mainstream, which would then presumably mean thread ripper chips would then have even more cores and more threads. And uh, we would continue sort of this trend that AMD kicked off when it released the original Ryzen chips, which if you remember back then, Intel's top mainstream offering was four cores and eight threads, whereas the 1800X, the 1700X, and the 1700 all had eight cores and 16 threads. So Intel's obviously shifted its strategy to better match AMD's, and it looks like if this ends up being a mainstream part like uh, it seems to be, then we're, we might even see that sort of strategy by Intel of following AMD's lead with core and thread counts. They might actually have to follow that up to 12 cores and 24 threads on the mainstream platform, though I don't know if they're really outfitted to do that in the near future. We'll obviously have to wait and see for that, but that's a complete aside to this battle is that Intel may be struggling to keep up because their architecture just might not be as easy to scale up as AMD's. Regardless, you can go ahead and check out this link in the description down below if you wanna take a closer look at these numbers. But I took all of the numbers from this benchmark and put them into a chart alongside the user benchmark averages for the 9900K, the 2700X, and then I also projected this, and I'm calling it the 3700X. I don't think anyone really knows what it will be called, but that's what I'm gonna be calling it in this video. But I also projected this out because if you notice with the benchmark page, it says a turbo is up to 3.6 gigahertz. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that the entire benchmark was run at 3.6 gigahertz, and assuming that everything scales perfectly, which doesn't always happen and is purely a synthetic sort of brain exercise at this point, just to sort of see what we might be looking at score-wise if we up the clocks, if it scaled perfectly and raised the clocks to 4.5 gigahertz, that is also plotted on this chart. So let's go ahead and plop over and uh, take a look at that chart. So now in the blue, you have those averages for the 9900K, and of course, being an average, this accounts for the people that have a really high overclock, but also people that could have even downclocked the 9900K. So an average is not a perfect representation of the 9900K, but that's what I'm using here just to give us a ballpark idea, as well as the 2700X with the user benchmark average is in red. Now the two orange bars are the 3700X, or at least what I'm calling that, the 12 core engineering sample here, the Ryzen part for the Zen 2 architecture, and the lighter orange, is the, the the benchmark as it was run at 3.4 uh, gigahertz with a boost of 3.6 gigahertz. Now the dark orange bar is if it scaled perfectly, what it might look like score wise at 4.5 gigahertz, which has been sort of the rumor for where these Zen 2 parts are gonna be able to reach out of the box. So if we could hit 4.5 gigahertz and perfect scaling, that bar is what you would see. And if you compare that then to the blue bar, the dark orange and the blue bar, if you're Intel, you have a very big problem on your hands because the way AMD has priced its chips historically with the Ryzen series processors is they undercut Intel's similarly skewed processors every single time. So if we're looking at this Ryzen chip as a mainstream part that's supposed to be going up against the 9900K, it seems like a safe bet that AMD would try to undercut the 9900K to not only give you either equivalent performance, or in this case, if you're working with multi-core performance, you're gonna blow the 9900K out of the water if this scales right and if this is accurate. 
So Intel may have a major problem because it doesn't look like in 2019, Intel really has a good solution to combat the AMD Zen 2 architecture. Uh, since Ryzen launched, Intel has been stuck on essentially the same architecture, just refining it more and more and adding cores and threads. But at this point, if this holds true, looking over at the single core um, performance, AMD is caught up in the single threaded department. And that's always been the big weak spot for AMD. That's one of the major reasons that games play so much better on Intel chips is because especially if you're looking at the higher ones, the 8700K, the 9700K, and the 9900K, those chips have better single-threaded performance and have equivalent cores as the mainstream Ryzen parts. So they are getting significantly higher frames. Well, if AMD has now matched Intel on the single-threaded department and has more cores and more threads and costs less, because remember, Intel's still struggling to figure out 10 net, or I can't talk. Intel's still struggling to figure out how to make 10 nanometer parts in uh, really good yields, they can't drive the cost lower than AMD. So AMD can make more of these chips than Intel can put out, they can price them cheaper, and they give you a very compelling argument for going AMD Ryzen instead of the Intel side of things, especially looking at the fact that Intel really hasn't done much over the past few years. They've really been kind of flat on their heels uh, since Ryzen has launched, and it's really starting to show. And with Zen 2, if these numbers hold, this is a major, major problem for Intel. But of course, I do wanna hear from you. I will, like I said earlier, leave links down below so you can sort of check out uh, these benchmarks and take a dive into it for yourself. But then I would love to know your thoughts on this. Do you see this as a major challenge to Intel? Obviously, Ryzen has already been competitive with Intel, but do you see this as the sort of tipping point where AMD becomes the more attractive option for most gamers, even on the high end side of things, which has been really been where Intel has had a stronghold even since Ryzen launched. So let me know your thoughts on this leak and the upcoming Zen 2 architecture in general in the comments down below. And as always, if you like this video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things are great for the channel. You can follow me at the social media down here at Who's Your Hardware on both Instagram and on Twitter. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Who's Your Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.